I thought you had... What? Maybe you wanted to have. What? A black Santa. No, they were out of the black Santa. Oh, they were out of the black Santa. I always want the black Santa. Yeah. Unfortunately, I got the white one. It's racist. It's unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction. It's up, Corbin. I'm Rick. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, juicy content. Thanks juice flows all over there. Twitter, all the time. All over my butt. Yep. Gotta have that juice. You ever juiced on somebody's. <sighs> wow! <laughs> wow! <laughs> he was just gonna ask if I've ever juiced on anybody's butt. Uh, anyways, today we got a little. Uh... Do you really wanna know, no, Corbin? No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> it's more of a uh, ah, rhetorical, rhetorical question. question. Yeah, so. What's happening today besides you being gross? Uh, this is a little interview uh, by two of our faves, Cajole and Twinkle. Oh, cool. So they're, it's called The Icons. So they're actually just in conversation together. With each other. With like, each other. The, like the way we saw Kalki and, and yeah. Anya Rob. So right. It's not that one, but yeah, it's similar Comparable. to that. They're okay. just going to be talking, which I'm very excited about because these two personalities, I think, would go very well go together. Go really well. <laughs> and I don't know, I'm assuming they probably have been friends for years. Probably. I would imagine. imagine. They were yeah. really popular around the same time. Yep. And so I'm sure they... I don't even... Maybe they've... You guys can... I don't know if they've done a film together. Maybe they... Yeah, I don't know. I'm either. sure. Do you know? Twinkle have and... Twinkle and Kajol, Kajol, have they done have a... Have they done a film together? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anyways, well, you guys can let us know. Akshay's uh, Twinkle. She's the only Twinkle. She's the Twinkle of his eye. That's true. Here we go. I'm beautiful. I'm hot. <laughs> Maratha Mandir, where your movie's been playing for 25 years. Oh, that's I the theater. Know, okay. Can you imagine? I don't think that I have been in this theater. I, I think I came last when uh, Shah Rukh and me came for a function, but actually to sit and get the feel of this theater, I haven't been here for like, how many years has the film been running? 24 years? I mean, Meryl Streep can't say that about her movies. No, nobody can. can. That's, that's true. true. I I think it's, uh, it's, it's not you know, can. I don't believe Tim that Curry. I'm wrong. I was just going to say Tim Curry But can. it's not a regularly it's showing thing. No. Every season of Midnight. Who are part yeah. of uh, who are part history. They're part, history and a part of everybody's lives. All these fans have made Raj and Simran a part of their lives. Yep. A, characters in their lives who they've handed down like, you know, generations. Oh, my child is born. Let's meet him with Raj and Simran. So I think uh, nice I mean, it's great to be eternally young. So, I mean, yeah, on, why on, not? Screen, on cellulite. Sure. Cellulite. How old are they? This is like within the past the 80s, week. I think was oh. quite a... I'm guessing they're know, in their 40s. Was was I don't think that lots of people uh, managed to... It, it was really one of those, you know, it's a sink or swim and, you know, this uh, I mean, kind of situation. I mean, now you see they have these fancy entourages and the and vans. vans and you yeah, see the van. The van. See, I yeah. had a van with the van also. I was so, working with your husband once and we were shooting. There were these little hills in the middle of, uh, you know, some river. Oh, all the, that one. You remember that. Yeah, remember and that. so all the men would just turn their backs and, you know, pee wherever they wanted. And I was just holding on. So it was like... That's breakfast, true. lunch, oh, three o'clock. I said no. my bladder is going to burst. I can't, I can't do this anymore. And I got into a boat and I went rowing <laughs> myself to another hill. Did my business and came back. And of course, then everybody That's was awful. looking at me. Heroin Just let her to go to a tree and squat. Don't look, look at her. Yeah, That's why you need to sag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There would be bathrooms. There'd be bathrooms. Yeah, yes. And he always has a jacket. So It'd be that simple. And you know, you're there. Like, Call sag if there's no bathroom. One thing I wanted to ask you, I mean, at least for me, even when I come in front of the camera sporadically, I do worry about aging. And that's why I like writing, because it kicked the midlife crisis out of the orbit. Mm, I mean, instead right. of worrying about the lines on my face, I have to worry about what lines to come up with next. Yeah. But that huh. doesn't really happen to an actor. Do you worry about it? Uh, I do. I do worry about it. Aging has to do with energy. It has to do with energy. More than the lines on your face, I feel people look at what, uh, look at how you're saying what you're saying. And uh, I feel more than more than the lines on your face, I feel that somewhere down the line, age shows in people's eyes. When they get tired, when they get bored of what they're doing. In the way they think. That's when your age actually, Absolutely. that's when people start noticing the lines and the wrinkles. So no, I, I, I worry about it. Yes, I am concerned about it. Who isn't? And I do my daily routine religiously. Which is what? <laughs> what is your daily routine? I, you know, I am extremely, extremely careful about drinking my eight glasses of water. I have to have my eight to ten hours of sleep at least. 
I go to sleep early. I'm one of those weird people who does not have a night life That's or a, a social drowning. life for that matter. She okay, drinks at least yeah, eight yeah. to ten glasses of water a day. One of the healthiest things you can do. At least twice a year. And she sleeps eight to ten hours. But yeah, so I mean, I'm I do I wash my face every night like religiously. I you know put my cream on and I'm like yeah okay now I'm ready to go to bed. So it's. It's all of that, and uh, I take very, very good care of myself. I work out. I do all of it. Looks we have like a lot of things in common. I mean, no, oh, oh, yeah, we, okay, <laughs> not we don't. We know <laughs> that. <laughs> not that. We do have that in common, but we're not mentioning it here. She doesn't look that mention. different from when she was in there. Twenty. They've, 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 they've both are, aged really well. Bottoms. Just to to hide the cards of Mike and an entire laptop. We hide it. It's really not that big. <laughs> the other thing, aside from that, that we are in common, is that we were both serious. This, this is a serious question. It's about, a very serious it's about strategy. We were both in boarding school. <laughs> and I remember you were in St. Joseph's. I was in St. Joseph's. And you were in New Era. I was in New Era. Yeah. We, had a, we were at a co-ed school and you were in an all-girls school. Right. So we used to always say that all the St. Joseph girls and the Kimin girls would come during all the inter-school competitions and I all our boys. Is that true? <laughs> Uh, I think they eyed all the boys. It had nothing to do with your school in particular. We eyed the St. Peter's boys as well. Would you send your daughter to an all-girls school? Do you think that it's beneficial? I, I don't know whether... Uh, I, I honestly... In fact, I have sent my daughter to boarding school currently. But uh, I think that right now, the way the world is, I don't know whether it would be an advantage or not. Mm. I don't think I it would be an advantage at all. It's such a thing I that's not a thing here. Like, yeah, it's right. not all girls and all boys. It's not really a thing here. Not anymore. Yeah. You know, the other gender as an alien. I'm sure there are some, like, but they're not just, prominent. But I think that they have it figured out much better than we did. Definitely, do. definitely. Yeah. And I think um, and I think the fact is that till we were, so till I, I went to boarding school, I was mm -hmm. in a school. I don't know if it's healthy. I don't know that it is either. We all studied together. They were not, you know, different from us. And we fought with everybody. Yeah. So I mean, it was not like oh, I'm having a fight with him because he's a boy or anything like that. So I mean, I did. Like, yeah. I did have a tendency to beat the boys more than ever beat the girls because I, I used to be violent in these fights. But yeah. <laughs> Good and for think, you. Uh, even while we were growing up, the other thing I feel that we have in common is that we grew up in this all-female household. Yes. So you know, you have a single mom who's raising you, and then your grandmothers and your aunts, and that's your world. And though we never even spoke about feminism in our house, I think it became an inherent part of my being. How did that shape you growing up in the same way? Um, like you said, I mean, there was nothing, nothing uh, spoken about yeah. feminism. But at the same time, if we had to change a light bulb, it was done by us. Yeah. You know, somebody got the ladder, somebody went and changed the light bulb. If something had to be fixed in the house, it was us. If uh, my Jhadu Katka Wali did not come home, <laughs> it was us. We yeah. have actually cleaned bathrooms at home as well. Yeah. So my mother was very categorical about this. So that was our upbringing, that we were supposed to do everything by ourselves. That we should not need anybody else exactly. to, uh, to live. To live happily and successfully, and that yes. was that was the whole point. That was exactly the way that I was brought up. I mean, it was yeah. never there was never a that there is a provider. It was like you provide, mm. yeah. and if you don't provide, then there is there no is one. Very much. You just have to you know, get on yeah. with it. And exactly. I think it was it's a healthy wonderful. way to be raised. I mean, our kids, unfortunately or fortunately, shows you need to work for it. I hope that by the fact that I am working today will teach my daughter something. Yeah. The fact exactly. that I am that I go for work today will teach my son something exactly. about whoever he is. You know, going to marry or you know have be with, be with yeah. the rest of his life. So I think uh, I think it's very important, and I think that um, I, I'm very clear about it with my daughter and my son that you know you guys have to start working soon, and you have to start you know you have to start living your life mm -hmm. rather than learning how to live your life. Yeah. So I think uh, so. I, I hope that we are continuing that with that teaching. I had my first job. At the only disadvantage 13? of growing like up like that right, was real, not like right. you had no yeah, yeah, yeah. prototype of how to be a wife. So suddenly friend. you're married and you have <laughs> these in-laws and you're like, how does this woman from auntie the next day go to be mommy ji? <laughs> and how do you do that with a feeling like a hypocrite? And so I, I didn't, you know, I didn't. Unfortunately for me, my mother-in-law has given me that time and space. And I know for a fact that she used to sit and her friends would come over home and her friends would be like, hey, I'm 
to my mother and I would turn around very proudly and say that you know oh, jab maa bolegi na to dil se niklega yeah that's the maa se nahi niklega that's amazing and i was just like i was so i was so happy Sucks that i don't know it and i was so touched dry dust that she's giving me that time to grow into whoever i'm supposed to be that that's she's giving me that story. space you know so i think i really really respect her for that my respect for her deepened after that what made you know or think that this is the man you want to spend 21 years with if at the very least <laughs> i i i think that i was in love and all no no i i was i was the kind of person before i got married that i would never have gotten married i always felt that i would be one of those people who you know somebody would have to hold a shotgun to my head to take me and make me you know get married get married otherwise you know a <laughs> no your hell that kind of thing i was one of those people so uh, but eventually when i met Ajay I think that he just gave me such a sense of stability and uh of just like he's such a grounded grounded person and he's so so very much he's like a he's like a wall he's like a rock so I think that that's something that uh, I really believe I knew for a fact that you know he would not leave me mm. and I would not want to leave him either so I think I found the right person really and now to make things even more complicated you have that hum do hamare do you know thing kids in this whole canal yes, so exactly <laughs> it's a you have a fridge it comes with a manual like child comes just like the whole release very true there's absolutely they no just, training in yep, you leave the hospital and you're like yeah. good there luck you go. <laughs> see you later it's a I weird feeling isn't oh, it's it awful. <laughs> it's awful it's very <laughs> so very scary I'm like am I this is mine now i'm supposed what do i do with it my exactly my message was all to to all my friends <laughs> that you know so i took message to karan and manish and everybody all my friends i was like if feel like you're doing something wrong when you walk me, away from the hospital really leave do. me alone for the next 6 months do not come and visit me do not come and say hello to me i don't want to see you why because i was so i was like listen i have to concentrate i have to get this right <laughs> <laughs> i can't afford to screw this up this is yeah. just too bloody important in my life and i don't have the time and the patience to cater to you know oh friends are chai pee lo or you know guys why don't you come come and that was just like i wish i had thought about that, that. Actually said that one. so they were very very sweet and they still came but at least they took me you know with a pinch of salt and they said okay we'll come back in 6 months no don't worry you don't have to see us again <laughs> so yeah i was lucky so what are your parenting tips and tricks i think with teenagers i think the most important thing is to listen I we spend so much time yes, taking tips agree. from people are hame ye karna chahiye hame wo karna chahiye hame hame ye bolna chahiye main aise bolna chahiye I think sabse zaruri ye baat ye hai ki hum baith ke bas unko and listen they to just hear want to be heard yeah, not to correct and they want to be treated correct. like adults yes. who have their own way of thinking correct. it may not be your way of thinking and it's definitely not my way of thinking <laughs> but uh, I think they they just want to be heard and most of the times that's exactly what i do with this all so i mean you should you should come mama i think i want to do this so i'm like okay baby, tell me and then she'll sit and she'll sit and by the end of half an hour she's talked herself out of it also she's talked herself into it also mm. and then by the end of it she's like i'm just like okay now we'll now we'll wait and see and then you know if it happens it'll happen in a most organic way or it won't because she will have understood the practicality of it not happening yeah and i will not have to take the onus of being the overbearing parent and you know putting my foot down yes of course you have to at times there are things that are completely mm. impractical that sprout out of their mouths but i think that's just it i think the most important thing is just to sit and listen to them listen to them yeah. do you even understand what they're saying <laughs> i mean what is the language they're using i and my son came and he said no this song slaps And I just don't know what it means. Can you continue this meaning? It's a slap. It's a slap. It means it's good. <laughs> For most of your life, so you have also, you know, a master small fortune of your own. You have divided up bills. Who pays for everything? You like, for well, example, in our life, all the kids' school education, I pay for. Okay. Because then I can tell them, "You study, write, only because you are studying." Okay. Because I can tell them, "You study, write, only because you are studying." Okay. Because I can tell them, "You study, write, only because you are studying." Okay. Because I can tell them, "You study, write, only because you are studying." Okay. Because I can tell them, "You study, write, only because you are studying." Okay. Because I can tell them, "You study, write, only because you are studying." Okay. Because I can tell them, "You study, write, only because you are studying." Okay. Because I can tell them, "You study, write, only because you are studying." Okay. Because I can tell them, "You study, write, only because you are studying." Okay. Because I can tell them, "You study, write, only because you are studying." Okay. Because I can tell them, "You study, write, only because you are studying." Okay. Because I can tell them, "You study, write, only because you are studying." Okay. Because I can tell them, "You study, write, only because you are studying." Okay. Because I can tell them, "You study, write, only because you are studying." Okay. Because I can tell them, "You study, write, only because you are studying." Okay. Because I can tell them, "You study, write, only because you are studying." Okay. Because I can tell them, "You study, write, only because you are studying." Okay. Because I can tell them, "You study, write, only because you are studying." Okay. Because I can tell them, "You study, write, only because you are studying." Okay. Because I can tell them, "You study, write, only because you are studying." Okay. Because I can tell them, "You study, write, only because you are studying." Okay. Because I can tell them, "You study, write, only because you are studying." Okay. Because I can tell them, "You study, write, only because you are studying." Okay. Because I can tell them, "You study, write, only because you are studying." Okay. Because I can tell them, "You study, write, only because you are studying." Okay. Because I can tell them, "You study, write, only because you are studying." Okay. Because I can tell them, "You study, write, only because you are studying." Okay. Because I can tell them, "You study, write, only because you are studying." Okay. Because I can tell them, "You study, write, only because you are studying." Okay. Because I can tell them, "You study, write, only because you are studying." Okay. Because I can tell
So I think uh, we do that. We separate it that way. I have to say that for Ajay, that he is very, very, very much hands on. Like if I have to get up at seven o'clock with Yog for school, half the times he will get up at seven o'clock anyway. Sit with him, have breakfast yeah. with him, send him to school, etc. So it's not. I don't have to get up every day. And uh, you know, even as far no, it as be that both, when Hissa was young, both working, I'm but now when he's everyone. working out and stuff like that, he does. <laughs> that's take, when Leland you know, decides to go into classes and stuff right. like that. So he does spend a lot of time with the kids, and he is very, very much hands on. That's good. All of last week, I've just been sleeping in, and he's awake and you breakfast. You can't just tell your son. Around, which is, yeah. But he gets me another thirty minutes. So it's not like he's like out of sleep. Not at that stage. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Get four. What should he do till seven? Might as well look. After a little while, if she goes out at night, he's the one who's waiting up for her to wait for her to come back. Yeah, I, mean, I think open all the door for her. And I think all dads that. are going to so do that. He's yeah. the one who does all that. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me now, what are you looking forward to? You've been here for like thirty years almost. Thirty years has been thirty years. Are you that old? Eight. Twenty eight years. What next? I Is it just movies don't... for the rest of your life? No, I honestly don't know. I don't know, and uh, I like it like that. I don't know what it is. I don't know wh- where I'm aiming for. I never had an aim uh, ever, and I've reached where I am today uh, without uh, actually, you know, heading in any particular di- direction. Um, I think life just happens to you in places. Yes, there are times when you have to lead it, and when you have a thought. I do have a thought, obviously. Uh, but mine is more involved with, uh, you know, I I really want I want to spend time with my kids. I believe they're my kids for a reason. Yes, mm-hmm. they are going to they are growing up too soon, and I love them and I like them as well. I have yeah. to be honest that I have some super great kids. I like them. So next for you is an unknown path, and you like it. I like it like that. Mm-hmm. I like it like that. Not to have it scripted, and so that I can do anything that I want to. Yeah. But you are following a script, and I think you're following kuch kuch hota hai because suddenly <laughs> I'm seeing you in the second half. The person who didn't care is now all dressed up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are you Anjali from the second half? Right. Kuch kuch hota hai. Not at all. I would never go towards Indian so hard. <laughs> I wouldn't. But still, I wouldn't. now you have hair, makeup. I've seen your Instagram. I have hair and also. No, no, but you are not like really into it. You're not into it. But you're not really into your looks like now. I honestly, um, it, it was very weird. But I started working when I was about 16 years old, and uh, before that, I was in boarding school. So I never really had the opportunity to go out and like you know pick up clothes for myself. My mom did most of my shopping for me, so I was uh, you know kind of given. अरे ये कपड़े हैं for boarding school. And then I got to the movies, and then it was more about again people were handing me clothes, yeah. and somebody was giving me something or the other. So I kind of reached the tender age of 27 and realized that I have no opinion on clothes. on clothes. And I was like, why is that? Interesting. I mean, like, why is it that I have no opinion if somebody asks me, do you like prefer black to white? I'm like, uh, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, how can me, and I'm an opinionated person. How can me, as an opinionated person? Not have an opinion on what I like or what I don't like. So I sat down and I was like, "It's not rocket science." I mean, random, much less intelligent people than me are doing this at a <laughs> much better, at a much, uh, at a much, you know, a greater level. So I mean, what's the big deal about it? It cannot so be so now, difficult. You can put together an airport look. No. I, <laughs> I mean, is this right? I can put together an airport look before I went to this goddamn thing, and I did hundreds of times over. No, I think that uh, I, I think it had more to do with you know learning to put together what I liked and what I didn't, and learning that even clothes have a way of saying what you are. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, so what is so I saying about have it? an opinion about it that I'm classy, uh-huh. I'm beautiful, I'm hot. <laughs> <laughs> did you listen to your mom ever? I listened to my mom. You I did? listened to my Such mom a, good girl. a lot. I listened to my mom a lot and now as I'm older I realize that the kind of things that she taught me when I was a kid and that I used to rebel against like if I got angry with somebody and she would be like you know yeah. anger is not the way. You can't get angry. You can't let the other person win. And I would get so I would get more angry when she told me that. <laughs> I would really get more no, angry when she told to get me angry. That. So I don't know on what basis she was giving. My mom gave me advice like this. But my mom, and honestly, I realized it when I got older. It just kind of seeped in yeah. somewhere, and I was like, no, I'm not going to, you know, let the other person win. And I, it worked for me. 
it worked for me as an adult more than it worked for me as a child but it only yeah. came to me as an adult because it was given to me as a child mm. so mm. i have to say that i thank my mom for these small this is just one of the small things that you know she taught me about she mm-hmm. taught me about compassion she taught me about charity she taught me about uh, you know uh, relationships and how to work through them that you have to work at them yeah. for it uh, to make a difference and for it to last so yeah there's so many things that she That's taught true. me I think what keeps me grounded is uh, is the fact that I don't honestly take everything very seriously. I don't believe that it's as big a deal as it's made out to be. I don't believe that um, yes, I am of course successful. I believe in uh, I believe in myself. I, I like who I am today. But I think it's also got a lot to do with who I am rather than what I did mm-hmm. and uh, what um, accomplishments awesome. supposedly I have made along the way. So what is that one trait within you that you're very proud of? The one trait that I'm very proud of. I'm proud of a lot of things actually of myself. Okay, so give us <laughs> 10. <laughs> uh, one trait that I'm very I I like the fact that I can laugh. Mm. I like the fact that I have a sense of humor and that I am able to um have a perspective of things that seem very big at that moment but aren't really when you look at it in the long run so yeah i i like that about myself having said that was lovely 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 to have you here and you. um what Same should we, what should we do now should we just get a drink unwind watch a movie yes drink coffee okay i <laughs> I want a gin but yeah okay I don't <laughs> and a movie yes which one should we see did you say okay name some other thing something really classic and iconic and now this you've seen how many times that's true uh this i have not seen that many times how but many i agree i have seen it i think twice that's it i've seen it once on tv and once in the theater with everybody else at the premiere so that hmm. was it so let's see a classic that neither of us have seen like name one mela <laughs> I want to tell you I just want to tell you that I've seen that film no 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 why is mela funny you don't know okay. no I'm and this, this looks like it's actually twinkles twinkles thing and it's her show it's her thing uh, i guess it's it's called a tweak india i thought it was Yeah, no, the icons because there was another one right there at the end in the in maybe the, she hosts like and a show thing. called the uh-huh. uh, this yeah, show. She hosts the icons. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it um but yeah, they're both wonderful. They both yeah. have great personalities. Obviously, Kajol has a great head on her shoulder, which is admirable because, you know, in India she's one of the biggest stars that you can get. Married to one of the biggest stars as well. Get. Yeah, I mean, two superstars raising a family. That's that's to be congratulated in a big big way because mm-hmm. that's that's statistically that is a rough road to go down. I mean, it's hard enough to raise a family let alone to be full two full-time working people then add to it the entertainment industry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm really that's as we says know, a lot about both Hollywood. A lot yeah. of drugs. That's it's just not, not here in Hollywood though. None here. No, no. No drugs. There's never been drug use. It's one of the things we're most proud of about yeah. Hollywood is there's never been an incident of drug use no. ever in the history of cinema in America. That's true. No. Johnny Depp never done drugs. Never. I know it's shocking to no. a lot of people, but it, he's it really sober. is. Never, never had sober. a drop of alcohol. Jack Nicholson? Yeah, never. Never had a joint. No. Nope. Not once. Chris Farr? Oh, that's just that. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Let's you, talk about John Belushi then too while you're at it. Do you ever do you ever see the uh, off topic for a second? the SNL just a few years ago Adam Sandler he did the song about Chris Farley. Oh yes. And then he was like you're going to end up like Belushi and Candy and he's like those are guys are my heroes I hope so. Which is so sad. So sad. <laughs> so sad. They're all gone. So sad. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, anyway. Yeah, that was fantastic. I would love to talk to both of them. Really I think it'd be a lot of fun. Um cuz a lot of fun and insightful. They don't take them so seriously. I feel like they're both pretty down to earth. people. Yep. Um which as long as you're doing this kind of conversation where you're talking about stuff that really matters. Mm-hmm. I mean the stuff that really matters is the art form that you love mm-hmm. and then the life that you live that is down to the values of being a parent, raising your kids, being a spouse, what's your outlook on life. That's the stuff that all the other stuff that so many places do uh, around the world where what they're looking for is that sound bite of gossip just makes me want to vomit. Yeah. Like um 
when people ask, like, do you ever get starstruck in the interviews? I'm like, no, not usually. I mean, Nawaz, maybe, just, I think I was more nervous just because it was one of our first interviews. Yeah. In person. Yeah. And it was in India with one of my favorite actors. Yeah. But it wasn't really because I, I appreciate, like, artists as people, but also... I could easily be in their shoes, right? And I know that they want to. They're just a person, right? And want to like that's the thing is like when I watch like with extreme talent. When I watch shows like we were watching Handmaid's Tale, oh, yeah. and like I want to work with Ann Dowd. Yeah. I, like I see those actors, and I'm like I would be starstruck at the level of how much I love their work. Yeah. And it depends on the circumstance. Like for example, we know these interviews are coming up. If I walked into a room and unexpectedly someone was in there that I really admire. Mm. It would take me a moment to get past yeah, the starstruck. Yeah, yeah. You know, like if you walked in a room for an audition and Tom Hardy's behind the desk, you'd need a moment to adjust. As much as you want to work with him, walk in. Well, perhaps I remember. <laughs> <laughs> or even bigger, the even bigger, Johnny Depp. Yeah. Right? It would take a minute to adjust to that, even though you're ready and like I want to work with you. Okay, I'm ready. Oh yeah. my God, you're so hot. <laughs> <laughs> like my friend who did the Daniel Day Lewis thing, and she walked in yeah. and saw him and went. Holy shit! Uh, can I walk back yeah. out? That would take a second to yeah. Uh, yeah. to uh, get into it. But yeah, they, they're both wonderful. I would love to talk to both of them. Yeah. Uh, so both of you, please come please, on the channel. Please, we love to talk. Be to our dose. Be our dose. Um, let us know what other videos we should react to down below. Just.